Hello everyone and welcome to another video. A few days ago, my package arrived containing stuff I bought from Japanese auctions. For those who don't know, Japan has a lively auction market. You can find a lot of things both old and new for a cheap price. So I thought this would make a good video because I get to share the stuff I bought but also be able to share the service I used. Before I proceed, I would like you guys to know that this is a voiced over video. I recorded the unboxing with my phone's camera and I did the unboxing in a mediocre way that the only way for me to be able to salvage the footage was to do a voiceover commentary. Moving on, I was able to purchase stuff thanks to Zen Market. Zen Market is a Japanese proxy shopping service that lets you buy from Japanese online stores and auctions. They translate product pages from Japanese to a language of your choosing. Whenever you buy a product through the service, they add a 300 yen service fee. And lastly, they let you purchase through a bunch of currencies and allow various methods of payment. By the way, this isn't a sponsored video. I've been using the service for some time and can recommend it. I use it to buy imports, you know, stuff that I won't mind being in Japanese since the retro gaming market can be a pain in the ass with ludicrous pricing. Let's get onto the package. For the most part, I ordered a bunch of Game Boys and some game art and fan books. I bought the Game Boys because I want to have a try at repairs and I plan to sell those I will keep to my local retro gaming group. As for the books, they're staying with me. Let's start with the Game Boys. The first item is this red Game Boy Pocket. It's in okay condition. There are barely any dirt or scratches, but it has a green battery cover. I plan to replace this in the near future. Aside from the shell, let's look at the battery contactors. As much as possible, we want it to be in good shape and not have acid leakage. And as you can see, this one is working. The second item is a black Game Boy Pocket. The screen sadly has a lot of scratches. Luckily, it's easy to get replacements. This one has a properly colored battery cover. I failed to show two things for this Game Boy. First is the state of the contactors, which is in amazing condition. And second is that it's a working model. During the first checkup, I thought it wasn't working, so it's a good thing I recently gave it another check. The third item is a Game Boy DMG with a Light Boy accessory. The Light Boy acts as an external light source so you can play in the dark. The accessory looks physically great with barely any dirt or scratches, and the contactors are in good condition as well. One thing to note, this uses AA batteries similar to the DMG. I messed up and show how stupid I am as I don't know how to attach the accessory properly at the time. Sadly, the accessory doesn't work and I'm not sure if there's a way to open this without damaging it. For the handheld, it's in great condition. This one comes with a game cartridge for free but more importantly, it works. Up next is a DMG that comes with a power adapter. I think the adapter is third party since Nintendo has an official one called the DMG-03. Anyways, the adapter seems to be in good condition but I wasn't able to check if it works. The adapter should be plugged to a 100V outlet but where I'm from, we use 220 volts. Also, I don't have a step-down transformer for testing. As for the handheld, it's in okay condition. The shell has a few dirt which can be easily cleaned off. But the bottom part of the screen has a few light scratches which is a bit annoying. The contactors are in great shape though and the unit is working. Next was something that caught me off guard since I got it for a low price. It's a green Play It Loud DMG. The shell is fine but there's some yellowing which you can easily see when you compare it to the battery cover. The select and start works are also starting to rub off. A thing to take note about this model is that all the words are in black. If you see a similar colored shell that doesn't have black lettering but advertises itself as an original model, it's probably a reshell. I'm not against refurbished units but I'm against sellers lying to their customers. Anyways, the contactors are okay and this model also works. I'm not sure if I'll be keeping this one yet. The sixth item is gamer related but I call it a wrong purchase. At first, I thought it was some weird third-party plastic DMG case because the pictures shown were up close, so I assumed it's as big as the handheld. Instead, it's a plastic case that has some Pokemon stickers inside. Luckily, I was able to get this for cheap, and I have some uses for it like holding some screws. I'll be keeping maybe one or two, and I'll try to sell the rest. Next is another DMG, but it has a screen problem. 
No, it's not the plastic screen that came off. The main problem is it has a vertical line issue. Luckily, this is easy to fix, though it will need some patience on my part. Other than that, everything about it is fine and it is operational. It could probably use some retro brightening though. I picked this up because it was being sold for a low price, and as I said, the issue on this one is really easy to take care of. The eighth item is four green Game Boy Pocket. All of them don't have battery covers and they've been listed as untested and probably junk. While the shells and contactors are okay, all of them have a massive case of screen burn. The reason I got them was they were sold for cheap. I don't advise buying something like this unless you're getting into repairs or know what you're doing. From my testing, only one is operational and the rest aren't. I'll be opening them for checking and repairs in the near future. The hope is that I can make them operational first before changing the polarization film. If not, then I'll probably sell the shells or keep them as stock. Now that we're done with the Game Boys, let's look at the books. First is the Marvel vs. Capcom Official Guide. If you're new to the channel, I've stated in one video that I love the first MPC title. So imagine my surprise to see this sold for a really low and reasonable price. I honestly thought this was a thin book, but holy crap this thing is thick. This is really cool because it contains character art, movesets, and it talks about the game mechanics. Hands down my favorite purchase for this package. Next are a bunch of Persona books. Let's start with the Persona 3 My Episode fan book. The book has a leather feel cover similar to hard bounded research papers. Call me weird but I like that the book cover is the C's armband, it just was appropriate. The book is divided into three parts. The first chapter talks about the journey. The way it does is by talking about the game like a diary or a logbook detailing what happens each day. The second chapter is about the answer and talks about each door. The last chapter is the glossary. I am not sure if it's an actual glossary, but the best part about this chapter is that it also serves as a compendium for all the personas in the game. I'm really jealous that Japan gets all of this and the only way to get them is via imports. Really wish that stuff like this gets released in the west and other parts of Asia in English. Second item is the Persona 5D Aesthetics art book. This is a big freaking deal to me because as far as I know, you can only get this by buying the game's limited edition version. This is a hardbound art book which shows the concept art for the finalized look of the characters and their personas. It might not sound much but this is really cool and I'm happy that I was able to get this one separately. The third item is the Persona 3 manga and this actually comes with the Persona 3 FES novel and card book box for free which I'll get into later. The manga is what it sounds like, it's the manga version of the video game. This is the one responsible for calling Dorkun Minato Arisato. Fun fact, I done goof on this one. While the mangas are in amazing condition, I didn't know that there are 11 volumes. This one only had 10. Now I have to wait and look for the last volume and I hope somebody does it soon so I don't have to worry about it anymore. The last item is the aforementioned Persona 3 FES novel and card book box. The box itself is a simple case but what's important are the things it has. First is the Persona 3 FES novel which is a novelized version of the answer. I find this unique because it's not common for me to show novelized versions of the game. Second is the card book. The card book contains 16 game illustrations on a sturdy card. This honestly feels like it could fit in a pocket, you know, art in a pocket. But yeah, this is also pretty cool and probably contains some of the best illustrations for the game. And that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This was a first for me and I'm well aware that I messed up some parts. I really need to get some proper recording equipment for this type of video just so you can hear and feel the actual giddiness that I have when packages like this arrive. There will be another one coming soon, I'm just waiting for all the things to be consolidated and I want to sell some of the Game Boys first. Until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.